Welcome. I think this topic of NFP is so important to talk about because it's so misunderstood, the idea of natural family planning. But also it brings out a truth about Catholicism, which is that at its root, everything that the church promotes and supports uh, is for our benefit. It really does illuminate the way the, the Catholic Church supports and approves practices that respect the natural dignity of the human person, unlike so much of society today. Mm -hmm. You know, Lisa, the first thing that popped into my mind as we were reviewing this topic was the time when I was seven months pregnant and my doctor asked us what kind of birth control we needed. And so we were so astounded, we said, I'm sorry, we don't need birth control. But she kept insisting and said, what do you mean by you don't need birth control? <laughs> and so I simply said, we're doing natural family planning. And again, she just misunderstood and just said, oh, that is birth control. Mm -hmm. And so I was reflecting on that story because how sad it is that our physicians, a lot of our physicians are con constantly prescribing birth control that actually harms our bodies without realizing the beauty of natural family planning of allowing God to open up ourselves to the gift of life. Shalom World asked women what they think about natural family planning. Oh my goodness, I uh, skip, I cannot. <laughs> a way to plan for the family the way God intended, living the way God wants you to live sexually in order to plan a family. I don't even know. I do, but I don't. <laughs> Natural family planning, to my knowledge, is timing your cycle so that you can, uh, or you know when to, that you can get pregnant. Um, the funny story about that is we've had 10 pregnancies and we always use natural family planning to get pregnant. Learning how to have children the right way, not going through, and I, I grew up in a different generation, so I come from a different attitude. Family planning was important. Natural family planning is a way of praying, you know, learning with your spouse how you want your family to be. I think it's working with your body's natural cycles to either, you know, have a baby or, you know, to thoughtfully hold off on that if it's not the right time for you. Yes, firsthand it is very effective. From what I hear, from what I read, yes. I had six children. <laughs> it's very effective. It's very um, unifying in the marriage, it's very healthy for the marriage, despite what the secular world says. Yes and no, I think. Yes and no. Yes, I think so. <laughs> I do think natural family planning is effective. Yes, I do think it is, if it's done correctly. I just loved hearing their responses. So I went on a deep dive through social media to find out what you all had to say about natural family planning as the green option. At Sarah Coffee, chastity and natural family planning, it is possible for people to choose to not have sex. At Hello There, told you I have come full circle on this. Good old natural family planning works education when you are fertile, measuring your temperature on those crucial days, putting it down on the calendar. I mean, we promote organic everywhere. It's time to promote organic family planning. At Be Gauzer, she writes, many couples using NFP have noticed that those times of abstinence make coming back together even more mind-blowing. At Test is Videlis, natural family planning prepares you for a long marriage of love. The lessons learned in a young marriage are used in an old marriage when one spouse is sick. The thing that jumped out at me here, Carell, was that the lessons that we learn early in marriage through that kind of self-denial and self-discipline really pays off later if one of the spouses is ill. When we learn to be more Christ-like and more self-sacrificing, and we just find more joy, and we become stronger in that. Mm -hmm. I really loved what that one person said about starting early in marriage, learning that kind of self-denial and self-sacrifice, that it pays off later on in life when you may be taking care of an ill spouse. That self-denial strengthens us and really brings more joy into our relationships. Mm -hmm. And so we would like to introduce two amazing guests. We have Ellen and we have Dr. Stegan here. Dr. Teresa Stegan is an OBGYN committed to improving women's health through NAPRO technology. She's the founder of Mystical Rose Obstetrics and Gynecology, 
which is a Catholic pro-life, pro-women medical practice committed to serving the health needs of its patients with professional excellence and compassionate care. And Ellen Gable Hercash is an award-winning author of eight books and a contributor to numerous others. Ellen is also a self-publishing book consultant, publisher, and editor. She and her husband James have been teaching natural family planning since 1984, and for the past two years have been teaching a 10-week long program, Theology of the Body for Teens, to the freshman religious classes at St. Joseph's High School in Renfrew, Ontario. Ellen and James are the parents of five adult sons. Welcome, Ellen, and welcome, Dr. Stegan. Thank you. It's a pleasure to be here. Dr. Stegan, let's start with you. So what is natural family planning, and how is it based on sound science? Right. So natural family planning, there's lots of different methods out there for it, but they all have the same underlying basis to them. And that is they teach a couple to track various signs of fertility throughout the menstrual cycle. And then the couple can know based on those signs, um, whether or not they're fertile on any given day. And then they can make a decision whether or not to have intercourse based on what God is calling to them at that time in terms of, is it time to have a baby or is it time to avoid having a baby at this time? Mm -hmm. Now, it's very different from the rhythm method. Everybody thinks of the rhythm method when you think of <laughs> NFP. Mm -hmm. And it's completely different. The rhythm <laughs> method was fine. You know, it was, it was the granddaddy, I guess you could say, of NFP. And that's fine. Um, but it was based on counting calendar days. And that's really only helpful if a woman's cycle was the same month after month after month. And that's just not true. Even in women who have regular cycles, we change little by little every month. And in women who have irregular cycles or are nursing, the rhythm method just isn't helpful to them. The methods that are used these days are based on sound research. And I, I won't go digging too much into details there because I don't think you want me to bore you with the details of Dr. Odeblad's cervical mucus research. But <laughs> let's, just say, let's just say it's in-depth, it's science-based, and it's extremely effective. Thank you, Dr. Stegan. I wanted to ask Ellen, we've got this whole piece of respecting the human person. What about the environment? How is NFP supportive of our just taking good care of the earth? Well, with NFP, there are no environmental pollutants. Uh, the paper charts can be recycled. Um, or a woman can chart on her uh, iPhone with an app. Mm -hmm. It's a NFP is a health supporting method as opposed to a health harming mm -hmm. method. Mm -hmm. um, there are no devices. Um, everything is natural. It, it, it does um, impose a schedule on a couple's intimate life, but that can be seen as a really good thing. Mm -hmm. Dr. Stegan, as a physician, what would you say are the benefits of natural family planning and why you would prefer to recommend natural family planning over birth control to your patients? Right, absolutely. So when you're looking at a lot of the hormonal methods of contraception, there are so many medical harms that are associated with them that I honestly don't know why women continue to use it anymore. Yes. Um, and these, these I, I kind of parse these out into two, uh, what I call generations, the first generation side effects of hormonal contraception and the second generation. And the first generation, anyone can learn about. All you have to do is go onto Google, type in the name of the hormonal contraceptive you're interested in, and then add the words package insert. And then that'll pull up a piece of paper that's included with all prescriptions for that particular hormonal contraception. Go down to the part that says adverse effects, and it will give you a whole list of the bad medical side effects. There's serious ones like blood clots in the lungs, strokes, heart attacks, liver, um, liver masses. And then there's the non-serious but highly annoying ones like weight gain, breast tenderness, irregular bleeding, mood swings, migraines. Um, you can even get something called melasma, which is where you get a permanent darkening of the skin on the cheek area that for some women, they can't get rid of it. 
So that's what I call the first generation of side effects. And, and that alone you think would be enough yes. right? uh, to people from wanting NFP or, or from, excuse me, from wanting the, the hormonal contraceptives. But then we're starting to learn about these second generation side effects. And there are studies showing that birth control pills increase the risk of breast cancer, especially if they are given to teenagers. So giving them to our daughters for ovarian cysts and irregular bleeding, um, we're increasing their risk for breast cancer later on. Um, it also turns out that birth control pills very powerfully impact the bacteria in our gut. Now that may not sound like a big deal, but the truth is, is that that increases our risk for autoimmune diseases. And autoimmune diseases, that's where the immune system attacks itself. Um, women get that at a higher rate than men in the first place, and now we're giving them something that's going to increase that risk even more. Moreover, there's a lot of really hot research right now that shows that the bacteria in our gut act like a second brain. They influence our emotions, they influence our cravings for food, they influence our weight, they influence a lot of things. And so impacting those bacteria for the worse is also going to negatively impact how a woman feels. In fact, I can tell you that one of the most common causes women come in to see me and say, I want off the birth control pill, can you recommend something else? Is because they'll tell me, well, I just don't feel like myself on this. Mm. I don't know who I am when I take this birth control pill. Wow. Thank you so, thank you so much for elaborating that because even in my doctor's appointment, she didn't really give me the risks for birth control. She just kind of said it. And if you look at the pamphlet that they gave you, they just said, oh, you'll have minimal effects. You might feel tired. You might feel a little bit moody, but nowhere near to the drastic effects that you were describing, Dr. Stegan, about how it could even be mortally, um, it could hurt you so, so much. Mm. Yeah, it's really true. Thank you so much for that. And when you put the two pieces together, that this is just a catastrophe for so many women's physical and even mental health with the mood swings and, and uh, other kinds of disorientation that can happen with messing with your hor hormones, we can see that put, putting those two pieces together, the environmental and the personal, there's just no way to defend it. I mean, it's really, it, it's really in, in, indefensible at this point. Um, Ellen, Talk about how, as a user of NFP for so many years and a teacher and all of that, how has the use of NFP actually really enhanced your marriage and your family life? What is it about the communication and the relationship that is so helped by this method of natural birth spacing or natural, naturally targeting when you want to conceive? How does that all work together to make your marriage so much stronger and your family life as well? Well, my husband always says when we're doing NFP talks, he always says, um, if husband and wife can talk about the wife's cervical mucus, they could talk about anything. <laughs> and, and, and it is true. It is very true because, I mean, if you can talk about stuff like that, you can certainly talk about the deeper things in life. Um, the other thing that, that really helps build the marriage is um, the romance part of it. Abstinence every month is a good thing. It is something that a lot of people don't like, but that it, it really helps a couple to appreciate um, their intimate life. It helps a couple appreciate the... Um, the importance of, you know, knowing the right time to plan and avoid a pregnancy. And this is where communication comes in because some months, um, maybe, you know, I would be ready for a pregnancy, but he wasn't yet. And so that's where we would have some uh, great conversations. Um, and you know what? It's really good to have fun. Um, Abstinence is a time that we have used to build that friendship part of our, our marriage. And um, it's something that our kids still are um, kind of in awe of, uh, you know, because we hold hands, we are affectionate, um, you know. However, I have to say that after 36 years of marriage, 
our romance is so much better than it ever was in the beginning because we have a mature love and we've been through so much together um, that, you know, it, it's, and it's all because of NFP. I, I totally, I totally believe that. Um, people say so many negative things about it, but in 36 years, I have no regrets. I would have never used any other method. It's been absolutely um, phenomenal. Mm, I'd just like to add a personal anecdote, and that is that when my mother and father first started to use NFP, my dad, knowing the times of, of abstinence, would just express his affection in just kind of natural, spontaneous ways where she knew that he had no expectation that intercourse was going to take place. And so she experienced his affection in a new way, in a, in a much more kind of pure expression of affection. And that was a liberation for her. She didn't always feel like, you know, it, women can, even though men don't intend it in very good marriages, can feel a little used if sex can happen any time and the husband comes to approach physically. Um, she may not be in the mood or whatever. But when they both know it's a time of abstinence, that affection takes on a whole new expression and becomes part of that beautiful friendship you described. Yes, yes. Dr. Stegan, the one question that a lot of our couples always ask is, you know, natural family planning seems great. You know, natural family planning, yes, it is the green option, but is it effective? Is it truly effective at spacing childbirth? Can you address those questions of these couples? Yeah, absolutely. So I, I think that a lot of people have that concern because it's it's low tech, I guess you could say, compared to you know taking a pill or or something else like that. Um, you know, and the thing to keep in mind is there's no such thing as a method that is 100% effective. I've literally delivered a baby from every method of contraception that exists. That includes tubal ligations. It includes IUDs, vasectomies, which are considered to be some of the most effective methods, tons from the birth control pill and Depo-Provera. So is it going to be 100% effective? No, because those methods aren't 100% effective. There is no such thing. However, what I can say about the methods of natural family planning is that they have been well studied. And not just here in the United States, but around the world. We're talking about Australia, Europe, India, China with their one child policy where you knew it had to be good if they were going to use it. And all of these studies, they really show the same thing. They show that natural family planning is as good or even slightly better than the birth control pill at spacing births appropriately. Mm. Doctor, I'd like to ask you a follow-up question, and that is, have you ever had someone come to you where birth control has failed and they found themselves pregnant and they asked to, to learn about the natural methods? Well, I wish that was the case. Uh -huh. um, unfortunately, <laughs> they, they just go right back to it. See, no one ever says, well, that didn't work. I'm going to try something natural now. Um, hmm. They'll say something like, well, that didn't work. Maybe I'll try Depo Provera next time or I'll try uh, something else next time. Yes. <laughs> they all fail. They all do. Um, but they just it's unfortunate that uh, the mentality that we have established in our culture, um, they just fail to see that it's not the method that's the problem. It's the mentality that goes along with it. Mm. Thank you so much. Ellen, um, what do you say to people when they say to you, oh, natural family planning, again, it sounds great, but it, it's just too hard. Is it, is it so hard? Well, and they're <laughs> usually talking about the abstinence, of course. Um, it can be hard. And anything in life can be hard. Um, and without God's grace, you know, we can't really do anything. Uh, however, uh, in our own case, um, after one of my um, pregnancies, I nearly died. Mm. And I was trying to uh, recuperate from this uh, condition. And it was nine months, nine months that we had to abstain. Oh. And uh, they act, the doctors were actually saying, okay, it's time to uh, tie your tubes or all this other stuff. And I said, nope, I'm very happy with the method I'm using. I'm using NFP. 
And so we abstained for nine months and it really made me realize how much abstinence is a great sign of love. Mm -hmm. And, you know, and it also reminds me of uh, when we are talking to engaged couples, sometimes um, the women will come up to us and say, my, my boyfriend or my fiance would never go for this because he wouldn't be able to abstain. Hmm. Well, I, I just don't know that I would really want to be married to a man that could not abstain. Um, and my husband is one who, you know, is very devout. And was it easy? No, it was not easy, but it was very worthwhile. We had a lot of periods of time where there were longer than usual periods of abstinence. Um, say during pre-menopause, but you know, we we went back to the old hand holding, just like you were talking about, um, Lisa, the hand holding, the very pure kind of um we played games. I mean, <laughs> I could just beat my husband in any trivia game. So it got to be got to be a point that he didn't want to play any more trivia games during abstinence. So but um but you know, it's it's um, it's all about your perception. Um, yeah, there are hard times that you're going to go through in any situation and in any marriage. NFP, I truly believe, is one of the things that um, has kept that romance part of our marriage. It has kept us as one, and no, we've had no separation with the using any sort of birth control because we've never used birth control. Um, but I did want to touch on, I, I just want to mention how uh, the doctor was speaking about the effectiveness. We used NFP for four years uh, before we had children because we were married very young. And um, relatives and friends kept saying, you guys must be sterile. So <laughs> there we were that, that, that first month that we tried for a pregnancy, well, how do you like this? We got pregnant and not only did we get pregnant, we got pregnant with twins. <laughs> so obviously, <laughs> you know, it works both, you know? So um, anyway, that, that I just wanted to add that. Um, and, you know, the whole NFP and abstinence is such a great example to our kids um, and it's been a great example. Our, our uh, second oldest son uh, got married a year and a half ago, and he and his wife are using NFP. And that was kind of cool, being able to teach one of our kids NFP and um, just wonderful. Dr. Stegan, would you like to add to what Ellen shared? How is NFP considered the green option for couples? Yeah, absolutely. So when you think about it, contraception by definition, the way it works is it takes a perfectly normal, healthy, functioning reproductive system and it purposely makes it sick. In essence, it poisons it. Now the words poison and green, they just don't go together. Yes, um, yes. So I mean, right there, you can see how that's not a green option for a woman's body. Mm -hmm. If you want to think about it from the sense of the environment, the way that we eliminate hormonal birth control from our bodies is it's expelled through our waste, through our urine and through our stool, um, that's getting into our drinking water. And this is not some sort of old conspiracy theory. Um, there are studies showing that the rates of breast cancer and prostate cancer are higher in countries that have higher hormonal contraception use. Um, there's also studies that are showing that it's affecting our environment, that it's affecting the food chains, especially um, in the nature areas that are surrounding the wastewater processing plants. So I mean, this, and you know, it's easy, I think, sometimes to think, well, so what if this is affecting some dumb fish? Who cares? Um, that's not how it works. Poor it fish, too. Fish, it affects, <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> if it affects the fish, it affects the animals that eat the fish, it affects how they interact with their environment, and that ultimately, it's going to come back to us. It always does. Mm. Um, that's just how it works. Mm. It's so important. I'm glad you mentioned groundwater because where I am, there's real problems and a lot of advocacy going on about what are we going to do about our groundwater problems. And a lot of that has to do with medications, including contraceptives getting into the system. Thank you, Ellen. Thank you, Dr. Stegan, for being with us. 
you really illuminated the mis you addressed all the misunderstandings I feel that a lot of women right now are talking about natural family planning. So thank you again for being with us and sharing your wisdom. My pleasure. Thank you. What a beautiful discussion we had with Dr. Stegan and Ellen. It reminds me of the Holy Family and how important it is for us to reflect and to contemplate the Holy Family. Because Saint Joseph, Mother Mary, the child Jesus, they all embrace God's will for their lives. Both the parents, both Mother Mary and Saint Joseph embrace life no matter the cost, no matter if King Herod was trying to kill their baby. It doesn't matter what was going on in their lives. They continue to trust that God would provide and their holiness is something that we can, can choose to follow and choose to embrace. And so as we, as we wrap up this episode, I invite you to contemplate the Holy Family and embrace life just as they have. Throughout this whole episode, a song was running through my head, you make me feel like a natural woman. And I feel like that's what this all comes down to. Is it okay just to be a woman as I am, to respect the natural ways that my body works, to encourage my spouse to respect the natural way that my body works? And so that becomes just an environment in which both of us can thrive, where both of us know that we're loved, where the communication is increased, and we're even respecting the environment thrown in. So and we would just like to encourage all of you to think about that, to contemplate what it is to be a natural woman and how good that can really be. We're always praying for you. Please pray for us too. Thanks so much for joining us today. God bless you. Someone who's uh, used media a lot in evangelization, so I believe in the importance of Catholic radio, Catholic TV, Catholics using the new media. Can I encourage everyone to watch your home TV? I think it's a great vehicle of evangelization. And God bless all of you. Shalom World, God's own channel.